At number 42 on the iconic 100 list is the Steph Curry Tops, Tops Chrome, Tops Chrome Gold Refractor, all of those versions uh, of his rookie card. And here to talk with us about this card today is the one and only Ty Nethercott from Sports Card Investor. Ty, this card is one that I think you know, Sue is, or saw a, a growth pattern that is really unlike almost any card that we've ever seen. I remember back in, gosh, it was probably 2015 or 2016, the card just exploded in all forms, but even the base, it was really like at the beginning of this sort of base revolution. What do you think about where it ended up on the list? I had this card at 41, so it landed very close, obviously one away. I feel pretty good about that at the same time, honestly, as I'm looking at this at 41, I'm I'm kind of going like, oh gosh, isn't this higher? Um, I don't know if you say higher or lower when you're talking about these lists, but closer to number one. Uh, it, it feels like, I think I remember ranking this at 41 and being like, that just feels weird. Yep. And maybe part of it's just having come off of Steph winning another championship. Yeah. Um, there's some recency bias in that. Maybe just sort of, you know, saying, wow, he's just, he's so important. He's such an important athlete. Uh, across all the different sets but this one for me was that it, it's it's the tops it's I, I love it he's smiling it's baby-faced assassin just you know nobody had any idea even the people who were the highest on Steph Curry coming out of college after what he did in the March Madness you know to be a great player nobody nobody saw him doing what he's done uh, in terms of championships in terms of leadership in terms of off the court in terms of personality and in terms of obviously um, just, you know, his three point uh, prowess and greatness and changing the game, revolutionizing the game. So I think that's why I think when you talk about when this card started to take off, it was right in the midst of that dynasty. That's right. right. And so they're starting to win, win, win. And people are going, Oh my gosh, forget the concerns about the ankle. You know, this guy is just, they're so fun to watch. And for me, in terms of the most entertaining players that I've ever seen play basketball, um, steps either at the top of the list for me or very, very near the top of the list. Uh, you know, if you talk about greatness between him and LeBron, I, I'm not a LeBron fan. Sorry, I'm not. I, I'm a Pistons fan and I just couldn't stand him in the 2000s. But I would much rather personally watch Steph play in spite of being you know, I would say primarily a three-point threat, and although he's an incredible finisher and passer and everything, um, a lot of people criticize guys like James Harden and other athletes who just jack up threes and dribble and shoot threes. But Steph, the way he shoots and comes off screens and hits them falling away and can knock it down from half court, even the pregame rituals, everything about the guy is, is pure walking entertainment. And now he's branching that outside of even basketball into golf and other things. Um, you can see where this is going to go. And he's, he just won another championship. He could still win more titles yet in his career and solidify his legacy even more. So I, I think this card has the opportunity, maybe more so than any card on the list, to move up significantly closer to number one in terms of where it landed at 42 um, over time. And I, I think it's a simple card, not a lot going on in, in terms of card production back in 2009. And that's one of the things that sort of lends to this is like, it is in that way, um, you know, outside of, you know, the, the super high and stuff and his, his RPA and everything like this is, this is the iconic, like basics, you know, rookie card to me. Um, and so I think it has a chance to really grow in, in, in iconicness over time. I, I like the word iconicness. Let's go with that. That's a good, that's a good word. So I have a lot to say about this card. Um, if you go back to the blowout forums, when that tops rookie boom thing was happening, I was very anti this card. And, and the reason was we, again, we were seeing hundreds of dollars spent for a card that it seemed like was pretty mass produced. Yeah. Right. I couldn't stand Steph chomping on his mouth guard all the time. The guy used to just really bug me. And then the Durant situation happened. And I just, I thought, I just didn't like the guy. Right. I just didn't like it. The thing that's happened over time though, is, you know, having the humbling situations that he's had, you know, having guys get injured, having teams fall apart, having to deal with all the drama and then sort of like stepping away from that tops upper deck era. And, you know, looking back, like this was a set they com they combined. This is the one year where they combined tops and tops. Chrome, right. Tops was the base card. 
these cards, as far as tops go, were way more limited than other tops years. Yep. Right. And then Chrome obviously was way more lim limited than any other base Chrome rookie. It's not even close. Yep. Talking a, a thousand cards, 999 cards. Yep. And then the refractor to 500 and then the gold to 50. Yeah. It's just, there aren't, there aren't a lot of the cards. And then, you know, you combine that with the fact that as we've talked about previously on the, on the Barry Sanders card, it's the score rookie card, like it's his profile. It's his image. It's a young baby, baby, baby faced Steph um, who just, you know, that's like the whole feature of the card. I think I could make the case now, even though I talked all that crap on the blowout forums back in 2015. Um, I think I can make the case now, Ty. I'm not sure there's a more recognizable basketball card since like Jordan. And I say that because, you know, you're, it, people are going to hate me for that because, um, you know, I've, I've been accused of being a LeBron hater. I'm not actually really like LeBron, but, but LeBron's exquisite rookie and his Chrome rookie exquisite's just such a rare card, right? Yeah. You, you rarely see them in hand. If ever, I think I've seen one in hand ever and his Chrome is a great card, but his Chrome doesn't look the same as his regular tops card. Does. Right. And so, you know, you have to, you have to see them both in your mind and you can, you can see the Chrome one where he's raising up and you can see the, the tops card where he's, where he's in his draft day suit. But for Steph, this is the base card. You know, I know that he's got his national treasures card and, 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 you know, that's a different, different type of card, but like, as far as recognizable basketball cards go, the tops Steph Curry card is like, it's one of the most recognizable cards of all time. And, like you say, I mean, who knows what, who knows where he goes from here. So I, I think I'm with you on all, on all fronts. Yeah. I mean, when you, when you talk about rookie cards, it's interesting, like the phenomenon of why rookie cards became hobby relevant, like they did in the first place. And, and when, when that happened and, you know, what, what even prompted that, obviously just, you know, kind of the, the debut of the cards and the first cards of a player and getting your hands on those has only grown over time. It's always unique seeing players, um, looking really young. It's, it's actually one of the reasons why I've had, I've had personally like mixed opinions about rookie cards of some athletes over time, uh, only because sometimes it's like, I don't even really recognize him. It's not what he looked like when he was really good. Like Giannis, it's like Giannis is this freakish athletic specimen now. And he was just this gangly guy, you know, young, young. but there's something so incredible about the untapped potential that you see similar to like seeing when you see like famous celebrities and athletes from their like elementary school picture or high school pictures or whatever, you know, they're just like, wow, that guy or Gail went on to become that person and do all these uh, remarkable, um, you know, feats of excellence. Steph's baby faced looks really young captures this, just this, just kind of look of like, to me, that's, that's how he is. Um, he sort of kept that look all the way up until like the last two years when he finally grew some facial hair and, and looks a little bit more mature. Um, but the thing I love about Steph, and I think it's captured in that picture is like joy for the game, but behind that joy is, uh, such commitment, such incredible work ethic and drive and resiliency, which to me actually was the biggest question mark around Steph for a number of years is that we saw in some of those finals appearances and things that he struggled like yeah. early on, he didn't, he didn't play his best. And I found myself wondering like, oh no, is Steph going to have the same problem Peyton Manning did? Mm -hmm. that when he gets to the biggest games in the biggest stage that they just key in on him and they find a way to shut him down and he won't be able to play. That hasn't been the case now. Coming off of a finals MVP, a well-earned and well-deserved one, uh, you know, people could have made the case for Wiggins, but it, it was a, he, it's Steph's team. You knew he was going to win the, win the, the award. And he's just continued to get better and better and better and more clutch and, uh, you know, more, more reliable, all of that being contained. Yes. He's out there. Sometimes he's a little cocky, uh, but he's, he's just a little dude out there amongst these like giant, giant men and just humiliating them, uh, whether it's from the three point line or in the paint. So I, I just think the, the card in many ways to me, just like really fits who he is as a player and who he's become, even though it's just this silly little, uh, you know, smiling Steph Curry. The last thing that I want to say, Ty, is is I like it when an iconic card is attainable for everybody, but also a goal for like the, the most yeah. elite, highest end collectors. Great point. And this is there's probably like the, no better example of, of that than this card. You got the base card that you can find in lower grades for really not very much money at all, and then you've got like the gold refractor, the super refractor. We haven't even brought about brought up 
I've never seen it. I don't think anybody's ever seen it. It's, it's either hidden in some collection out there that's, you know, amazing. And the, the owner knows that they're lucky as can be to have it or, or maybe it's still in a box, but it's, you know, clearly well into the millions of dollars for that card. So you've got everything from, you know, hundred bucks ish to like millions of dollars on this same image to me, like that's, that's one of the coolest things is when a card can, can have really any dollar figure in that range. I think that's, I think that's like a super cool feature of the card. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I think that's a fantastic point. So that's card number 40, uh, 42, the tops, tops, Chrome, all that, all those, uh, Steph Curry, 2009 tops rookie cards. Um, thank you again, Ty, for covering this card today. Tomorrow I'll be back uh, with another guest with card number 41 on the iconic 100 list. And until then, happy collecting.